Paul Schrader, the director of tonight's film, said, I came to Mishima because he was the type of character I might have invented if he had not existed. The Japanese novelist Yukio Mishima wrote about sex and violence and beauty and death. Many other novelists write about these things, but few live out their subject matter to the extent that Mishima did. He was an extraordinary character, a bit of a showman and narcissist, and a mass of contradictions. He married and had children, but he was also a homosexual. He considered that traditional Japanese values were being corrupted by Western capitalism, but he was desperate for recognition in the West. He was an intellectual and a man of action. He became obsessed with pumping iron, which turned him into a small but perfectly formed torso set on a pair of rather short, stocky legs. He was also the most frightful poseur. There are lots of photographs of him dressed in nothing but a Japanese jock strap, showing off his gleaming musculature. Sometimes it seemed as if he were almost trying to become the literary equivalent of a method actor. It wasn't enough for him to express his ideas through writing. He had to act them out in real life. He had to remake himself in the image of his own fiction. Creating a beautiful work of art and becoming beautiful oneself, he said, are identical. He also formed his own private army, the Tate no Kai, or Shield Society, though there have been suggestions that he was less interested in military strategy than in the romantic idea of lots of good-looking boys drilling around in designer uniforms. On the 25th of November, 1970, Mishima, with four members of his private army, overpowered a senior officer at the Eastern Army headquarters in Tokyo. He demanded that the troops be assembled, and then he made a speech in which he urged them to take the lead in restoring Japan to its old imperial purity. Then he committed seppuku, ritual disembowelment in the old samurai manner. Schrader's film, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, intercuts the events of this last day with flashbacks in black and white to the writer's earlier life. Mishima's widow, perhaps understandably, wasn't too keen on the idea of a film being made about her husband, although she did sell Schrader the rights to three novels, dramatized scenes from which are incorporated into the biographical details. None of the actors here are very familiar to Western audiences, although if you saw the ballad of Narayama, you might recognize Ken Ogata, who plays Mishima. Osamu, the central character in Mishima's novel Kiyoko's House, is played by Kenji Sawada. Sawada is a Japanese pop singer whose nickname is Julie. He's sort of the Japanese David Bowie. The first time I saw him was in Tokyo 10 years ago on a huge poster. He was completely naked, wearing an enormous amount of makeup. And at first, I couldn't work out whether he was a man or a woman. That poster was one of a series of striking advertising campaigns for a Tokyo department store and the art director on all of them was Eiko Ishioka. Ishioka has since become an internationally renowned designer, and it was she who created the highly stylized sets for the film. More recently, she also designed sets for The Making of the Representative for Planet Eight, an opera by the American composer Philip Glass, who wrote the soundtrack for the film. If, like me, you think his operas are boring beyond belief, don't switch off, because he is an excellent soundtrack composer. His music drives the action forward and sort of knits all the separate strands together. I like this movie because, although it's very much an art house film, it's very lucid. The structure sounds complicated, but actually it's very clear and logical. This is the portrait of a writer, and it takes you inside that writer's head. Mishima, of course, was an extreme case, but we all create ourselves to a certain extent, even if we don't all do it through bodybuilding. And we all have to learn to balance our inner lives with the physical world. Mishima thought that art and action were contradictory elements which could only converge in death, but he was wrong. Art and action can converge in cinema, and this film is the perfect example of it. <laughs>